Hi everybody, I'm Patricia Moreno and welcome to our Body Talks, Body Talk number one. And today we're talking about fat phobia. Fat phobia. So welcome, welcome everybody on the replay and I'm just getting everybody set up here. I'm so happy to have you. We're going to be talking for the next 20 minutes about our language and how we ended up in this fat phobic mentality. So if you're anybody who is having a hard time relating to your body in a positive way, if you've been in the diet struggle, if you've been and fear of gaining weight, not being good enough, uh, having a difficult time with your own relationship to yourself and your body. Thank you for joining me. And for this next 20 minutes, we're going to be talking about how we ended up in this fat phobic society and how we can actually make this change. How can we make a change for the good that is sustainable and can actually lead to transformation? Not just two steps forward, two steps back kind of living, but how how do we get to a place where our life can be transformed? And I'll give you a hint, it's not another diet. So I'm not going to be talking about diet plans, I'm not going to be talking about exercise plans, we're not going to be talking calories, micronutrients, uh, intermittent fasting, or any other fad. We're going to be talking about something that's the least talked about point in this conversation. Very, 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 very few people talk about it. And I want to bring it to light because I think it's actually the piece that's going to be the determining factor for those of us that have been suffering for a long time in this area of relating to our body. And fat phobia, the fear, the tremendous fear of fat, of being fat, of gaining weight, um, uh, fat shaming, fat bullying ourselves, most foremost is where we've got to change. So I hope you'll stay tuned and you can share, press share, invite your friends to join us. And we're going to be having four different conversations as related to body and how we can upgrade this relationship because it's the most important relationship that we need to upgrade and attend to. So press share, invite your friends to join. We're going to give a few more people a moment to log on. I see Stephanie, Taryn, Lucy, Haley, Tammy, Alexander, Rochelle. Good to see you guys. Good to see you guys. So glad you're here. I'm getting a phone call. Okay, nice. So what I want to start with is everybody, we're going to do some uh, interaction. So if you're ready for an interaction, right, I am. That means I'm not just going to be talking at you, but we're going to be working through a few things together. So I'm going to ask that you answer a few questions. So if you're willing to answer a few questions, right, yes, I am. My hair is a little funky. Right, yes, I am. Right, yes, I am in the chat box. And please, good to see you too, Apasana. Good to see you. Nice. Welcome back, my live stream friends. Yes, I am, Patty says. If you're ready to participate, put a yes, I am. Julie, how are you? We're going to take about 20 minutes today. We have four calls on the topic of body. Um, I'm also going to be sharing with you a retreat that I'm doing that's coming up at the end of the month, so stay tuned for that. But if you haven't signed up for these live streams, you can sign up and get all the four dates and you'll get the replays if you don't get to watch live. So if you haven't signed up and you don't have the link for that, go to patriciamoreno.com forward slash body talks, put your name on the list and we'll make sure that you are on the email list, you find out about, you find out about the next three conversations that we're going to be having. We're going to, we're going to cover four different topics and we're going to keep this conversation alive. I'm also going to give you a discount to the body retreat. And if you're in New York City, and we're also going to be recording it. So even if you can't join live, it's a good idea to be on the list so that if you do want to get the recording of the body retreat, that you will have access and we'll be able to find you and let you know that it's ready. So yes, Work is starting, but you'll stay in. Okay, drop in when you can. You can sign up for all four calls at patriciamoreno.com forward slash body talks. Gorgeous hair as usual. It's a little funky, but 
Thank you, Sabrina. So I want to start by asking you some questions. So get your fingers ready. I want you to type into the chat box because I want this to be a, a, something that we could do together. First question, have you ever been on a diet? Right? Yes or no. Have you ever been on a diet? Type the answer in the chat box. Question number two, have you ever lost weight on a diet? Have you ever lost weight on a diet? So joining me, answering the questions as I put them in. Okay, have you ever gained that weight back, the weight that you lost on a diet? Have you ever gained that weight back? That's the third question. Number four is, do you still think another diet is the answer? Do you still think another diet is the answer? Do you just, do you still think another a diet is the answer? And who did you blame for that diet not working? Who did you blame for that diet not working? Who did you blame for the diet not working? Gained it back plus more. Yes, yes, yes. Who did you blame for the diet not working? What reason did you believe? What reason do you believe you weren't able to stay on the diet? What reason? What, why do you think that you were not able to stay on that diet? Why were you not able to sustain the weight loss or the diet? Why do you think you were not able to keep the weight off? Why do you think you were not able to sustain that weight? You blamed yourself. You not only always blamed yourself. You always blamed yourself. Got it. Because you're a stress eater. Blame was all one. You blamed money. That's interesting. Uh, yes, yes, yes. No willpower, emotional eating, uh, lack of discipline, lack of self-control. Yep, 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 yep. So where do you think fat phobia comes from? Fat phobia is, first of all, diets. Uh, the diet industry is a $6 billion industry. And in order for them to sell us diets, they have to sell us something that makes us believe that one, we are, we will be more lovable, we will be more popular, we will be more beautiful if we lose the weight. But here's the problem, it's the only business that sells us something that doesn't work and the consumer blames him or herself for the reason it didn't work. It's the industry that's perfect for repeat customers because one, the diet doesn't work, there's plenty of research, we're not gonna go into the research right now, but there's plenty of research that really talks about restriction and diet mentality and how it actually causes us to gain weight. So here's another question. If you knew that dieting was gonna actually cause you to gain weight and even more, would you do it? If you were told, if there was like, uh, like the you know the medicines that we take, the medical industry that we that we that is so monitored. If diets were monitored like the medical industry was, and there was a label on the diet that says doing this diet may cause you to gain weight and even more, would you still do it? Would you still do it? Now here's the issue. In order for us to buy into having a better body or the ideal body or being thinner, uh, we need to, right, no way, Rochelle says no way. Well, that's the truth. The truth is because it's effect on our system, not, we're talking just physical, our physical system, that's what happens, right? Our body turns into uh, this, um, our cells are already wired to, see this as a stressful situation. And so when we're in restriction mode, that environment causes a whole shift to happen in our body, which makes it pretty much impossible to not only get the weight off, but to keep it off. And so whenever we start to think about restriction already, how many of you feel already the stress start to come up when we start thinking of restricting 
restricting our diets. But I want to go on a little bit more. I want to go on to a couple more things. What was the first age that you were on a diet? What was the very, do you remember, do you remember when you first went on a diet, how old you were? How old you were when you first went on a diet? How old were you when you first went on a diet? I was eight years old when my mom weighed me and put me on a diet and when she looked at me and I weighed 130 pounds and her fear just impressed upon me that, oh my gosh, something is terribly wrong with me and this is not right. Six years old, 14, nine, six, yeah. And every time, and there are plenty of studies that show that anybody who's on a diet under the age of um, 16, I think it is, is really high profile for eating disorders. Now, this is the other thing I want you to think. So, were there people in your young adult life that, or not so young adult life, that made comments about your body, unsolicited comments about body? If you lost weight, you would be, you would be more beautiful. If you, oh, you should lose weight because then you'll be able to get the job that you want. When in your household, did people ever make comments about your weight? Did anybody, when you were growing up, make negative comments about your weight? Your mom, your grandparents, your neighbors, yes. So yes, so many of us have had people make comments about our weight, uh, this kind of looking up and down. I totally remember every time I would come home um, from, I traveled a lot when I was, not traveled a lot, but when I finally left home and I would come back home, the first thing, the first comment always made about me was my body. Always. And everything growing up was all revolved around body and beauty. And here's for me where, where I really started to understand how deep this goes is my mom, she really believed it. She believed, and, and I think this is, this is the issue that we're really talking about today is why did our parents, why were our grandparents, why were so many of our friends and family so, uh, so afraid about our weight, that they felt that they could comment about our weight. Oh, you should lose weight, you should go on a diet. Have you ever commented or has anybody commented on the foods that you choose to eat? For instance, oh, you shouldn't choose, you shouldn't order that, you should order that, has fewer calories, or um, you really wanna eat that? Are you sure? Come on, don't eat that. How many times have people felt that it was okay to tell you what would be better for you or what you should eat or shouldn't eat? Oh yes, CVAO, KVAO, sorry, I don't know how to pronounce your, your handle, says, do you really need that? Do you really need that? So all of this, uh, Liv says, my mom was 100% afraid that I would never be as beautiful as perceived as I could be. Which I almost have the opposite. When I lose weight, my mom tells me I look so skinny and not healthy. Uh, I stopped eating with the family. So why I'm going down this list of questions is so that we can actually really start to see that it's not just us, but it's our culture, it's the society, and all of this comes down to a real fear that we've all been fed that one, being, unless you're a certain weight, you're not healthy, unless you're a certain weight, you're not healthy, or that as women especially, if we don't look a certain way, we won't have what we, need to have in our life. We won't get the dates that we want to have. We won't get the jobs that we want to have because we're so used to having to look a certain way to have the success that we want. Why? Why do you think that so there's so much pressure on us to look a certain way? Why do you think that our parents, our grandparents, or our friends, or our community, we look at each other 
And we feel that in order for life to be good for certain people, it really is necessary to look a certain way. Can anybody give a shot to that? Why? Why? So I asked my mom. I asked about my own mom. You know, I was just with my sisters this weekend, and one of them was saying, which I never knew, that my mom would go up to her. I have seven sisters, and my mom would go up to one of my sisters and say, you know, your sisters don't want to say this, but they're really worried that you're gaining so much weight. You're, they're really worried about you gaining so much weight. And why would my mom do that? That's the question I asked. Why would my mother do that? She was lying, obviously. I mean, I don't know if that's obvious, but she was lying because she was so fearful. I know my mom wanted the best for us, but she was so stuck in this mindset of fear because she grew up also in a culture where it was it was everything. A woman needed to look a certain way. I remember um, my sister telling me a story that when she wanted to go to college, again, I have 10 brothers and sisters. When, she, when my dad was telling his brother that she was going to go to college, he's like, why are you wasting money on her going to college? She's just going to be barefoot and pregnant anyway. We're talking not that long ago. We're talking recent. That's the kind of stuff people still say. Why? Because women are supposed to look, look a certain way and everything is about objectification and how we look and are we pretty enough and are we thin enough and this is all stuff that we we learned through media, through um, TV, through our parents. It's inherited and inherited and inherited and inherited and this fat phobia leads to a language of fear that we use on ourselves. The, what? So here's another question I want to ask you, really, really important. This is going to start to lead us to the answer. What, when, don't give me the good answer, because if you're on this call, this is already an issue for you, obviously. So don't give me the answer that you think is like the right answer. Give me the truth. In your fear state, how do you speak to your body? How do you speak about your body? How do you describe your body? In your fear state, what kind of words do you use to describe your body? Be honest. What kind of words do you use to describe your body when you are in a fear state? Disgusting, of course, of course. Disgusting, um, Disgusting is such a strong one, for sure. Anybody use that word, disgusting? What other words do you use to describe your body? Negative is not a, you no. Know, what word besides that? Don't say a negative word. Just say, what's the actual word? Come on, guys. Tell the truth. Disgusting, big, gross, fat. Okay, so fat's interesting word. Very, very, yeah, but you're saying very, very negative, but put real words. Put real words. I know it's hard. I know it's hard, but here is where we all can start to see how embarrassing. Oh my God, embarrassing is a big one. So, Here's where we're going to get into the into the meat of the situation. Here's where we're going to get to the meat from the situation. So think about the words that you use. Maybe you don't want to write them here because you're embarrassed or you're shy, not worthy of taking up space. You're so fat, disgusting. Yes. I say, oh gosh, I wish I was. Come on, tell me the real words you use. like prune. How can anyone love this body? Disgusting, horrible, pig, ugly, gross. Nobody wants this. So here's where we're going to get into the to the to the real point of the situation. So we think that in order to feel better, repulsive, even in order to feel better about our body, we have to be a, we have to be thin, right? Put that in the chat box. In order to feel better about my body, I have to be what? In order to feel better about your body, what do you have to be? 
What do you have to be? What do you have to do in order to be happy with yourself and your body? In order to be happy with myself and my body, I have to lose weight. I have to have a uh, I have to be in better shape. I have to have more muscles. I have to be, um, what do you think in order to feel good about yourself that you need to do? What do you think in order to feel good about yourself that you need to do? You need surgery. You have to be super active all the time. In order to be happy about my body, I have to be skinny. Yep, in order to feel better about my body, what? So here's where I want to start. What we're not, what's not being sold. So this is what's being sold to us. In order to feel better about my body, I need to restrict. I need to control. I need to work out more. I need to lose weight. I need to go on another diet right? Give me a yes, yes, a thumbs up or hearts if that's true for you. In order to feel better about my body, I need to restrict, I need to control, I need to lose weight, I need to shape, I need to go on a diet, I need to be skinny. If, if you agree with that, write yes or put hearts, la 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 la. I have to not be jiggly, I have to get rid of the excess fat, I have to have fewer stretch marks, yes. Okay, good. So here's where I come in. Here's what I think is really my area that I want to work on. If, and I'm going to tell you quickly, I know some of you guys know me very well and you know my stories, but I think it's really important for me to, to share this part of my story with you. So I remember being, um, I was probably around 30 years old and I went to hear a lecture. I was at this um uh, in the, at this retreat and I was listening to Deepak Chopra do a talk and he was saying that in order to change our reality we have to change our identity and our identity is everything that we say about ourselves the language that we use the language that we use the words that we say after the words I am determine our destiny so after he said that I remember being in the shower and thinking I was like thinking over the whole thing and I remember just like my mind opening up and hearing and watching like this movie of myself uh, from being younger and starting to work out and realizing that the language that I was using all the time was something like I'm so fat I have to lose weight I'm so fat I have to go on another diet I'm so fat I have to stop eating this I'm so fat I need to XYZ I am so fat I was called the chubby one since as long as I can remember. That was my identity. My identity was someone who is overweight, unlovable because of the weight, and needs to lose weight. Need to lose weight. I need to lose weight. I was never at my weight. I was never feeling good about my weight. I was always in the struggle. I was always in the struggle. Does anybody relate to that? Please post yes post hearts, write something down if you relate to that. If you relate to the fact that your constant language about yourself is always, I need to lose weight, I hate this body, I have to restrict and control, I need another diet, there's always this inner conversation about you not being good enough yet. Language shapes our reality. It shapes our identity. We always have to live true to that identity. Diets don't work because they don't talk about the main issue. Diets are a way to restrict, but no matter what, if you think that you need a diet in order to feel better about yourself, or you need to lose weight in order to feel better about yourself, or you need to have no stretch marks or no wrinkles or no jiggles to feel good about yourself, this is exactly why the diet industry and the beauty industry has you trapped. That's why you'll always buy another diet. That's why you'll always keep thinking it's your fault. That's why you'll always keep looking for the next quick fix, the next pill, the next surgery, the next diet trend in order to fix yourself because you have so much fear of not being enough that the 
but you'll never be there. You have tried it before. You've lost the weight, you've gained it back, and you've considered it to be your fault. You don't have enough willpower, you don't have enough courage, you don't have enough self-discipline, you weren't able to stay on long enough, reinforcing this idea that you're a loser, that you're not good enough, that you just need to have more willpower, that if other people can do it, and where are those other people, then there's something just wrong with you. Yes? Yes? Yes or no? Put that in the chat box. Yes or no? It is not true. What is true is your beliefs about yourself and your language. The language that you use shapes everything and I know this is a really difficult concept to get but the language that we use I'm fat I need to I hate this I don't like this you can never be create a life of love a life of acceptance a life of greatness with language of, of hate of language of less than you need to change your language. Language is the shaper of reality. Fear gives us a really different perception than love. When you are taking action, when you are taking action from fear, Fear is a perception of love. Language defines our reality. So all this fat phobia, oh my gosh. Okay, answer this question. What are you so afraid of? Why are you, why do you live in this fear of being fat? Why do you live in this fear of being fat? Why do you live in this fear of gaining weight, in this fear of being too fat? How come, what are you afraid of? What are you really afraid of? See if you can write that down. But you hate the way you look, why? Let's go deeper. Let's go deeper. Whose belief is this that you are living that you have to be a certain weight to be lovable, to be beautiful? Whose thought is that? Whose thought is it? Because I think I won't be loved because of it. Because you're afraid of rejection. Because you're not good enough. Who sold you that? Who sold you that idea? Who sold it to you? Somebody sold it to you. You weren't born with this idea. You weren't born with this worry. You weren't born with this fear. Where did you get it? Where did you get it? It was inherited. It was sold to you. Where did you get it? It's not yours. Just one day it just popped up? No, it's not yours. You learned it. You inherited it. You read about it. You learned about it. Maybe it was media. Maybe it was your parents. Maybe it was your school friends. Maybe it was your grandparents. We've learned this. This is not a truth. This is something we've been sold. If you look at, I was reading um, a book, Intuitive, uh, what is it called? Intuitive Eating. Intuitive Eating, where she was talking about um, Evelyn Triboli. I don't know how to say her last name, Tribol, Triboli, was really just going through media and how, how even when they were selling cigarettes, Everything was like Virginia Slims and Slim 100s and Slim this and that. People, women were saying they wanted to smoke so that they could lose weight. So even by selling, even when selling cigarettes, they're using the word slim because it's such a prevalent thing in our culture that slim is beautiful and that that is the, the shape that all women should de desire to look at. But we have to remember, we have to remember that this is something that is not true that we have bought into. Now, I know, final thing is, so what? Okay, I still wanna be thin anyway. So what? I still wanna be thin anyway. How can this help me? Because ultimately, you might have the fear of being fat, and or you might not. And you might say, well, let's get to the bottom line. How do I get the body that I want? I want to be healthier, I want to be happier, I want to fit into this, la, 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 la. Tracy says, yes, that's why I started smoking. A friend of mine recently did say that. I want to start smoking so that I'll, so that I'll lose weight. 
Can you imagine? And if you know my story, my personal story was I started to do crystal meth as a weight loss tool. Crystal meth. Guys, this is really, really a serious conversation. And if you want to be free from this, we've got to remember that language shapes our reality. It's time to reboot to an empowered language. Because if we say, I want to lose weight, or I'm so fat, I have to lose weight, or I need to lose weight, I'm disgusting, I am not beautiful, nobody will love me, I can't be this way because I don't want to fit in, I want to be healthier. Um, Think about that language. I want to means I am not. All the words that we say become our programming. So even when we're saying, I want to lose weight, we're not saying what we really want. We're saying what we don't want. I don't want to be fat. I don't want to be unhealthy. I don't want to be big. I don't want to be laughed at. I don't want to be looked at. I don't want to be hated. But because language shapes our reality, it has to begin with the language that we use because language determines how we think and how we think determines how we feel. And if, we're in, and if we are in a fat phobic reality, we're so afraid of being fat, then we're going to keep perpetuating that fear and that fear will never lead to actions that cause us to actually get what we want. Make sense? Can we get a yes, yes? So here's just one. I want to just ask you um, a couple of ways that we're going to look at this. So last piece, we're going to wrap it up soon, but I want to ask you, this is, this is how you can start noticing this fat phobic mentality today and how you can start making a change in your language. So think about, do you compliment do you compliment others on their weight loss? Do you compliment others on their weight loss, either out loud or to them? Do you say, um, oh my God, you lost weight. You look great. I lo you lost weight. Or have, has anybody ever said that to you? Oh, you lost weight. You look great. I was just at a wedding this weekend and uh, one person said to another person, oh, it was to a, do it was to a, a mother of a, of a young girl. Oh, she's lost weight. She looks so beautiful. I was like, oh, my God. Yes, that's called fat talk. So what I want you to start noticing is fat talk. Fat talk is when we compliment each other on weight, when we say, oh my gosh, yes, you look beautiful. You must have lost weight. How'd you do it? Do you find yourself being uh, surprised? Oh, this is a good one. This is a good one. Do you find yourself being surprised or mentally or verbally congratulating fat people when they are dieting or exercising. Or maybe people say that to you. If you're overweight and they see you exercise and they say, good for you. Yeah, do it. Or maybe you see somebody who's out, who's over, who's really big and they're out and they're jogging and you look at them and you go, yeah, good for them. Good for them. Do you ever do that? If you're doing that, you're expressing, this is like fat shaming, right? Oh, that fat person is working out. Good for them. What about this? Yeah, well, don't do that. We're going to talk about that in a second. Um, do you use the word fat in a derogatory way or simply as a descriptor? Do you use the word fat in a derogatory way? She's oh, towards yourself. Let's say to yourself, do you say, oh my God, I'm so disgusting. I'm so fat. Or that person's so fat. Do you ever use the word fat in a derogatory way? Yes or no? Do you use the word fat in a derogatory way versus just a descriptor? That woman's tall. She's fat. She's blonde versus oh, I'm so disgusting, I'm so fat. 
never towards someone else but for by yourself. Fat in any way, using it as a derogatory way, increases fat phobia and fat shaming. Do you give advice, even mentally? Oh, she shouldn't eat that. Or why don't you just get the low-fat version? It has fewer calories. Or you think about, oh, that person shouldn't eat that. They should really be eating this. Or they would be much, much better if they just, or you see someone who's overweight and you see them ordering an ice cream or something and your whole body just goes, oh, poor thing. They shouldn't do that. You know, they really shouldn't do that. This is what I want you to notice. Why? Because all of this is going on in your own head. This is all evidence of how you are treating yourself and evidence of how fat phobia is so prevalent in our world. Right? Our children hear us say that too. And, and this is a big issue. This is a big, big issue. But the piece that I want to talk about is that it begins with our language. The healing has to begin with our language. It's not about getting on the diet because you've done that before. It's not another diet. It is not another diet. And, and in Evelyn's book, um, Intuitive Eating, if you think about that, there's so many things out there now, right? So there's the whole movement that's against dieting, and then there's another movement uh, towards intuitive eating, and then there's another movement towards um, getting rid of sugar, and then there's another movement towards body positivity. So all of these things, all of these changes, I'm not saying one way is better than another, but what I am saying is the only way that we are going to create real sustainable change in our lives, I'm talking transformation, not a diet under any color flag out there, no matter what, it's about the relationship we have with ourselves. It has to come from our own internal language. When we feel fear, when we, oh, here's the next piece of this, sorry. Here's the last piece of this actual um, exercise is whenever you find yourself judging somebody else, whenever you feel fear, your own fear, looking in the mirror, seeing yourself and, and having this language come up, I'm so disgusting, I'm so fat, uh, how could I do that again? Or you're looking at your kids, or you're looking at your neighbors, or you're looking at someone else that's at the gym, or somebody who's running, and any of these things come up, any of these ideas of like, oh, good for them, or you're using fat, in a derogatory way, I want you to catch these things. Catch this fat talk. Just try to see where it's present in your life. Look everywhere because when you start to notice your own fear around it, you can feel it. And when you feel it, it loses its power. I love this line that I just heard um, in, a, in an interview I was listening to. I think it was for Robert Tennyson. I don't remember the guy's name. Um, but it was a line that when we feel our fear, it loses our power. Here's the good part. Please write this down. This is, this is the, the bottom line of this whole conversation. When we feel the fear, so you feel the fear, you feel your judgment, you feel your um, disgust about your own body or somebody else's body, because even if you feel judgment about somebody else's body, you're still feeling the judgment and that judgment is being felt and stored in you. So it doesn't matter if it's judgment about you or somebody else, you're still getting the karma or the effects of that. You're still drinking the poison and thinking somebody else is gonna die from it. So notice, notice, notice. When we feel our fear and it loses, when we feel our fear, it loses its power. So you're gonna notice it. Wow, there's the fear. Wow, there's the fear. And every time you feel that fear, that means your courage is returning. Your courage is returning. Can you write that down? Yes, yes. Does that make sense? So what we're trying to do is get rid of this fat phobic mentality. Why? Because now you have the ability to make a choice not from fear, but from love, from acceptance, from courage. It's not about trying to be thin so that you're not embarrassed. It's not about trying to shape your body into something more lovable. It's not about trying to mold your body into something that you 
hope will fit in or will not get attention from somebody or will get attention from somebody. It comes back to you and your relationship with yourself, being able to make conscious choices. When we're in fear, when we're stressed, we're making very different choices than when we're in love, when we're acceptance, when we're feeling free. So the actual goal is to get into a mindset, get into the state of consciousness of love, what would love do? What would courage do? And having a, an extreme fat phobic mentality is never, ever, ever going to lead you down the right path, ever. So notice, we're going to be talking some more about language, but please just pay attention to your fat phobia. Where is it coming from? Where did you learn it? How is it being handed down to you? How is it being sold to you? And how do you break the spell? You have to break the spell. If you break the spell, hi Becky, if you break the spell, this is a waking up out of the mindset that's being sold to us, that we've inherited, that has been handed down generation after generation, and we can be the ones to break this. We can be the ones to break this, but we have to start waking up and noticing how we use our own language, how we use the word fat, how we judge or feel pity for other people. And so we've got to start paying attention. Is this fear talking or is this love talking? Ask yourself that question. Is this fear talking or is this love talking? These are the kinds of things we're going to be going deeply into in the body retreat that's coming up uh, May 31st to June Second, Friday night for a couple of hours, and then all day Saturday and Sunday. Um, this is a little taste of that. We're going to be talking about how do we have the breakthrough? How do we really create lasting and sustainable change? How do we use language in a very... Um, in a way that can help us recreate our relationship to ourselves and our lives. And if you sign up for Body Talks, if you haven't signed up for these talks, there's four talks, so we have three more coming. Uh, the next one is Wednesday night at 9 p.m., and, and the topic is different. What's the topic for Wednesday night? Uh, Lucy will put that in a second. So uh, next one is this Wednesday night. So make sure you sign up in advance. That way we have your email. We can um, send you the invite to the body retreat. And if you miss this call, you're just signing on and you miss this and you want the replay, sign up at patriciamoreno.com forward slash body talks. You'll get the schedule for the next three talks. And if you can't make the schedule live, you will get the replays. So please make sure you're on the mail list. And if you want to uh, sign up for the body retreat because we're already 25% sold out, you go to bodyretreatsplashthat.com. Body retreat splash that.com. Lucy just put that on Facebook for you. And you can get all the information there and you can claim your space now. This is a conversation I'm very passionate about. And I believe it's time we have to find a new way because the old way simply isn't working. Yeah. And it says, I know I've succeeded in weight, but it's hard to know the importance of knowing I am hard on myself. Absolutely. You see, here's the thing. You can succeed in weight loss. People do it. But we're talking about quality of life as well, right? You can force yourself. Some people are very, very good forcing themselves at doing things. But uh, yeah, we're putting all the links on IG as well. So please stay tuned. If you have, know anybody who would be interested in these conversations, please share with them the link to sign up for the schedule. Uh, help us spread the word because this is a big, big, that's not a pun, intended issue. It really is. We need to break this spell. We need to find something new. I don't want us to be handing on and uh, passing down our own crazy to our kids and the next generation. We are the generation that can put the end to this. We are the ones, but it's time for us to wake ourselves up and make this shift. What, what we thought was working is not working. So I hope you'll join me. I'll see you Wednesday night. I gotta hang up now and I'll see you guys soon. Thank you for joining me.